Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. So the question for this week um, was, what is, what is your most valuable material possession? And what is it that you value most that is not material? Um, and my answer for the material, uh, up until recently, would have probably been my bass guitar. But um, I finally have a house to move into with uh, the family. So um, not there right now, but that's an empty bookcase because we're moving stuff. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. Uh, and I really, it's been a goal for a while to get a good place for all of us. Um, and it's funny because I'm like moving stuff and I'm thinking, I don't really care about this stuff, but you know, we can't just leave it here. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's like laws against that. So that's my material. And you know, it's funny because that's, it's a rental. So it's not even like possession. Um, and then for non-material, um, that was a tough one. Like my go-to is always like family, you know, like uh, breath, every day, life. Um, but I think it's people or like relationships with people. Um, and I feel like I, I, a lot of times I have like some social anxiety, but I don't feel that at all when we play shows. Like, I feel like a lot of adrenaline. I feel like I can talk to anybody, but like in everyday stuff, like, I feel like I get anxious, but I also imagine like, and I say to myself, like, man, I'd like to just be alone for a while, but I imagine that. And I don't, I don't know, it makes me feel sad so um i like being alone um sometimes and um but i yeah i just like being even people that i don't get along with sometimes i like being around them just because it reminds me that um the people i do get along with are that much better <laughs> like you guys i have a question for you yeah. Why do you and your family want to go messing around in that old murder house for? Why can't you just just leave that place? You don't you don't want to go we're there. Two meddling milkman. You meddling kids, you can't no, you can't go messing around in there. Ah, uh, yeah. So there's that. Uh yeah, that's interesting you say that because uh my material possession is our little row house that we live in. Um it was built in 1925, um, in part by local prisoners which is kind of interesting. Um, it keeps a roof over my head. Um, we scrimped and saved and we actually paid it off early. So it's nice to not have a mortgage or pay rent every month. Um, and I don't see us, I don't see us moving ever again. Um, the only time I'll move next is probably into the dirt when I die <laughs> one way or another. Um, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, it's a great house. It's in a good spot too. It's yeah, it's a good spot. It's not huge. Sometimes I two large cats in there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have two large cats who take up a lot of room. Um, yeah. I sometimes think about having more room and then I was like, no, nah, I don't need more room. I just need less stuff. Um, uh, as far as non-material possessions, um, I think it's pretty amazing to have a, right now anyway, at least a functioning brain that's not a Republican and one that has the ability to play music, which I value greatly. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, that's pretty much, you know, the, the most non-material physical object kind of thing that I can think of right now a functioning brain that relies on logic and kindness and <laughs> unlike a lot of people out there right now so that's it for me i don't own a house i rent a house in south philly yes south philly the only place in the world where you can see small children 
quote, good fellows. <laughs> Timmy, come home. Yeah, that's right, Timmy. Go home and get your fucking shine box. <laughs> I heard that one the other day. Uh, okay, so uh, possessions. Well, I thought that I would, I have a lot of stuff that that is one of a kind and a lot of stuff that means a lot to me. Uh, some of the stuff's kind of sad and I don't want to bring everybody down. Uh, so I thought what I would do is, this is essentially a music show and I would show off an instrument. Now, I thought this should be something that, again, is unique, one of a kind, and it should be something that uh, has a connection to the dead milkman. So that ruled out um, my victimizer, which is my big synth thing that I built. Uh, it ruled out my hurdy-gurdy, because I didn't really use that on the albums. Uh, it ruled out my bodrin. I have a bodrin that ha is uh, covered in goat skin, and that I tune by spitting Guinness on it. <laughs> um, just think for a minute, folks, about how that smells. It smells like a dead, drunken goat. Uh, so I want to show you folks this. So I'm going to get it out of its case. And this is probably the only time you're ever going to see anybody holding one or demonstrating one of these uh, on a video. I mean, I know some people have them, and there are some videos. But uh, take a look, folks. This is a Copeland Tim whistle. Uh, let me explain this. This was made by Michael Copeland, uh, who's basically the Stradivari of Tim whistles. Uh, a, a genius of a craftsman and, and a great human being. Um, what happens is this is nickel plated, first of all. I want to point that out. A lot of people think it's silver. And I have seen uh, uh, stories about my Tim whistle that say it's silver. It's not. It is nickel plated. I think they only made a few silver ones. And I could not afford one of those. I bought this when I was very, very poor. Uh, and it costs, I had to save and save and save to get this. I wanted so bad. I also wanted a low D, which I couldn't afford. And those are super, super rare. You'll find some some people out there with them. Um, but the reason I was, uh, they, first of all, uh, I did play this on the woman who was also a mongoose. Hello, kitty. There's Dean's big kitty. I will, I will call your kitty. Um, I don't know if that will come through on because I know that uh, um, Zoom has a tendency to cut sounds like that. But uh, what happened was I, I got this and fell in love with it. And I found out that Mr. Copeland at the time uh, was living in Conshohocken. So I went to visit him and I got to visit his home studio and see the plans for my Tim Whistle. He has the plans for each one written out. And there's my name. It was like seeing Dr. Frankenstein take out the the you know, schematics for the monster. So I was super, super happy. Had a great day hanging out with him. Hey, Kitty, uh, had a great day hanging out with him. Uh, we eventually went into Center City because he had some business there. And um, we went to a shop that had antique instruments. It was right across the street from where I used to live. So we're in there and that's where I first saw like it, an antique hurdy-gurdy. And I asked how much it was. And the guy who was selling it said, well, I'm thinking about 10000 for it, but since you're a friend of Michael's, I can give it to you for eight. And I'm like, I don't have $8, let alone $8,000. Um, but I just had a wonderful day hanging out with Mr. Copeland. Uh, he stopped making these. So they're super, super rare. If you look these up, and I'll throw in some links, these are super, super hard to get. It sounds beautiful. I keep it in a case with polishing cloth. And at least, I'm going to say maybe once a month, sometimes every, I'll skip a month, it'll be every two months, but I do polish this. I, I take very good care of it. Um, I realize that I'm not its owner. I'm its custodian. Uh, it is absolutely a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of work. And I, I, like I say, they don't make them anymore. Uh, one day I'll either, uh, since when I... I'm not alive. Somebody else will either get it or maybe it'll go to the mus uh, Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix, which would be a nice home for it. Uh, but yeah, I am really, really super proud to have this. And I tell you this much, every now and then I just take this thing out and it makes me happy. But if I bring it in here, I don't know if you can quite, I'll include a picture. I don't even quite see the Copeland logo is on here. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. That's how you know. That's how you know it's a Copeland, and that and there's two brass pins that are up here holding the flipple in, but they're a little hard to see. And it's adjustable, and it's yeah, but it, it is literally the best Tim whistle that you can buy. So people, if you can find one, um, first of all, take your home and mortgage it, and then you'll probably be able to get one. But I just I love having this, and it makes me proud. And uh, there is a story about times somebody did try to steal it from me. And the person was twice my size and they didn't get it. So you probably heard the story. So, all right, that's that's it. And uh, um, Michael Copeland's still out there. And I should really reconnect with him and just let him know how much I love this. All right, thank you. Oh, for immaterial things, not interested.
not not <laughs> not interested. You know, oh look, it's the invisible chicken. No, other than the invisible chicken, uh, the material doesn't. Just material stuff is good. Yeah, just just I'm living in a material world, and I am a material girl. That's right. It's my, question. I guess the my my most valuable possession is my car. But I th re I read the question as what material possession do you value the most? Not the most valuable. Which I that's how you sent the question in, in the email. Anyway. <laughs> so how did I? Which time did I say it like that? Then you said <laughs> when you started. I thought you said what is. What is your most valuable material possession? I don't All right, know. here. Afterwards, I'll record myself <laughs> saying it the right way, and you can just edit it over. <laughs> All right. I just, saying, what do you I mean? Even like this. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, it's not my, I'll just say my car is not the material possession I value the most, but it's, it does, it's valuable to me as well. <laughs> I, lo I love my laptop. It's also valuable, but. Still, I don't know. I, it's easily replaceable, but I really do love my laptop. I'll have to say, say that. Um, but I can't use it without my glasses. So I almost was going to say my glasses, but I can get it. I, if I lose my glasses, I can easily buy another pair. They're all over the place. Um, yeah, I had a tough time with this, but I'm going to actually go with my... The, the acoustic guitar I have right now, it's a Taylor. It's also not unique. You can probably buy these right now at Sweetwater still, this, this very model. Um, but I use, I use it a lot. Practically every day, I write songs on it. I, I play solo shows with it. I don't know if I've used it, the Dead Milkman, but I have played acoustic guitar on recordings that we did not necessarily that one but i really like that particular taylor um of, of all the acoustic guitars i bought that's my favorite one so far except for the one that got stolen <laughs> <laughs> 1988 or whatever but never mind <laughs> And that's so long ago, I can't remember if, if, I, if I still had it. I'm, this one might be better. Um, for, the, for what is a, for not material possession or what is not a material possession? What is not a, what do you value that is not a material possession? I'm going to say my imagination because it's, it's been my, <laughs> solace <laughs> since I was uh, <laughs> a very, as far as I can remember, maybe it's just thought, just thoughts. I, I was thinking brain, but like Dean said, brain is actually a material possession and even thoughts might be material in some way because they rely on material to happen. But I'm just going to say my imagination <laughs> at that. It might not technically be me not a material thing uh but oh wow. you know it's material things come out of it as a result probably all the artifacts that exist come out of some imagination that somebody had somehow yeah inventions Ooh, that'll be a good another big question I think I have come up with a with a non-material thing. Uh, my mo favorite non-material thing is Gorgolax, the demon who possesses me. Um, Ride the Sabbath for president. Ah! <laughs> so I um yeah so yeah Gorgolax, the demon who possesses me, my favorite non-material possession. Can you provide links for that? Of Gorgolax? Yeah, not without getting sued. No, <laughs> I'm charging him rent. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, uh, so I'd love to be able to say I own a house, but I don't. Yet. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, I recommend this. Um. It's a weather tracker. I found it at a thrift store today. It's five dollars. <laughs> so, it's got like a. It reads the wind speed. It can tell I'm you jealous. the dew point. 
um, wind speed is very slow right now. <laughs> uh, all sorts of stuff, barometer readings. And it's from, I think, like 2000 or something. But um, I don't know. It's really cool. It even has a little like temperature reading thing. That's it. Okay. I'm jealous because I, I want that. I'll bring it to practice <laughs> next time. I'm going to smoke it. I would like you to test the wind speed of the fan at the rehearsal studio. <laughs> Pretty low. <laughs> what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Average the European? <laughs> I don't know. Ah! <laughs> Nerd African. alert. Nerd alert. The African. Um, my recommendation for this week is a uh, it's a web posting by a guy named Kevin Kelly who turned 70 years old recently. And the title of the post is 103 Bits of Advice I Wish I Had Known. And I'll provide the link for you, obviously. And I've selected just three to tell you tonight right now, and you can read the rest of them. I think there's quite a few good ones there. Um, one is, no one is impressed with your possessions as you are. <laughs> so that's appropriate for tonight's topic. Um, the second one I called out is, art is whatever you can get away with. Okay. Your shop said that. Yeah. And you got away with it. Yeah. yeah. And then the third one I've called out is if you loan somebody $20 and you never see them again because they are avoiding paying their debt, that makes it worth $20. <laughs> so you don't ever see them again. <laughs> That's it. Bye. I like that. Um, I'm going to recommend a movie from 2022. Oh, my God. That's now. Uh, it's called X. And X is from Ty West, uh, who you folks might know. Uh, he did House of the Devil, and he did one of my favorite movies of all time, Innkeepers. Uh, he tends to do horror movies with a bit of a, uh, um, a weird feel to them in that they feel kind of nostalgic, but in the cool way. Um, X uh, has uh, stars Mia Goth, who had a little part, or not a little part, but a fairly big part in the remake of Suspiria, so she has horror chops. Um and the plot is a group of people in the 1970s go out to a farm in rural Texas in order to make an X-rated movie. Uh, some of you younger viewers probably never heard about X-rated movies. These were things that we used to have before America became a theocracy. So it's a it's an excellent movie. And they're working right now on the prequel to it called Pearl. But I was really super happy with it. Very clever, very good foreshadowing of the deaths. There's some some just look for it and think about some of the stuff that people say and do and 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 you'll begin to uh, to see stuff that's going to happen in a very clever way so I like that all right my my second uh, recommendation is Mastodon but not the, not the hipster band. No, sorry, Joe. <laughs> not the hipster band, Mastodon. This is, in fact, a social media platform. Uh, it's a social media platform I really like. I, I'm not a big fan of a lot of social media platforms. Um, I stumbled upon this recently. Uh, first of all, let me tell you who I am over there so you can look for me. I'm at Rodney Anonymous. We can put this up. At mas.to. So all you would need to do is go over to Mastodon. We'll include some instructions. Get yourself and uh, find an instance that you like. It's a bunch of different instances, they call them. Uh, sign on and then just search for me. You might be able to find me uh, just using Rodney Anonymous, but sometimes it, uh, it doesn't. it's made not to hop across instances. So you have to use somebody's full instance. Uh, that's the, um, there's a little bit of a learning curve to it, I will admit. And I probably screwed up my first couple of posts, but there's a learning curve to, to every software you do. I like it for a lot of reasons. I find it super interesting. The EU have an instance over there and they post regularly. I found all sorts of cool stuff. And so far it seems to be free of people showing up going, hello, I am your number one new best American friend, John Smitsky. I am totally not, not a Russian troll. Miami Weiss is number one show. So I, uh, um, yeah, I really, really am enjoying this. And uh, um, and it's rare. It's been a long time since I've enjoyed any sort of social media thing. I think I've got less than 10 followers. So get over there, follow me, and then we'll all, we'll all be pioneers on something new together. So, and I'm not getting paid by these folks. I don't think they have any money to pay me with anyway. So yeah, just a, a big recommendation for Mastodon's social media platform. My recommendation has something to do with social media as well, um, but it's not a platform, it's an article. Yet another article from Atlantic Magazine. 
And this one is by Jonathan Haidt, who is a social psychologist. And it's called After Babel, How Social Media Dissolved the Mortar of Society and Made America Stupid. <laughs> and it's a pretty fascinating mini history of social media with uh, Jonathan's opinion of what's, why it's, how it's, how it, uh, how it's destroying our fabric. Uh, he likens it to the Tower of Babel being destroyed and uh, creating thousands of languages. So it's like creating th thousands of factions in society that think, think different things are true. Um, but what, I mean, it's worth reading because it's interesting just for that. But at the very end of the article, he has suggestions for how democracy can be saved, at least in our society. Um, so all's not lost. And here some of his suggestions are uh, to hold open primaries. This is for the United States. Uh, with ranked choice voting. Not, not every state, like our state in Pennsylvania, doesn't have open primaries. You can only vote in, vote for, vote in the party you belong to. And if you don't belong to a party, then tough luck. Um, number two, give Supreme Court justices staggered 18-year terms instead of life appointments. That way it gives it, uh, uh, the pre president's fairer chances to uh, appoint. You won't get this thing where Trump gets to appoint three in four years. Um, and three, reform social media itself to reduce one, and he doesn't have exact ways, but he just, here's an example, reduce the ability to easily share things so, so that stupid things don't become viral, and verify all accounts so that each one is a real person and you yeah, everybody has to use a real name no yeah. stupid bot names yeah master bot master don has a great well, you can use real name and they have a great verification so you can still use kind of why i moved name. over that way yeah you're verified so yeah. there's a, it's an interesting article read it yourself if you want um it's not terribly long without social media i would not have met my new number one best friend john smith who is totally totally not a student at at uh, st petersburg polytech it's your not. Google chat name. Meet yeah. me over there. Google chat. That's what I was, when I did words with friends, it was like I was getting chats. It's mm -hmm. like, what's your chat name? We should bring back MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> it's still out there, I think. I think somebody bought it or something, but not the other guy who buys things. But yeah. Yeah, what happened to Tom? <laughs> He's still out there, I'm sure. He's enjoying life on the beach or something. That picture forever, right? It was like, you turn and look. Yeah, it's your friend Tom. When you joined, you got a friend Tom. And then when you joined a Twitter originally, uh, Amanda Palmer came prepackaged as your friend. <laughs> and that was, that was awesome. Because <laughs> she was always on Twitter. It's funny. Well, thanks, guys, for answering that question. Twerk nothing. You know, Dan, when you first hear uh, You're the Cat, by Al Stewart, you're blown away. You can't, you're like, it can't get any better than this. It just can't. But then you hear time passages and you're like, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, buy me a ticket on the last train home tonight. You read my mind. I did. Been running out of reading material around here. I have to read something. Just stay out between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I learned that when I used to read Joe's mind. <laughs>